Well, okay. Um, group restructuring, so corporate restructuring, is top of mind to a lot of people, particularly given everything that businesses had to deal with through COVID. Now, you lead a global team of professionals addressing this very issue. Tell me, what are you hearing as you talk to people about this topic? Um, well, thank you, Rodney. Uh, and I think the, the, the topic is very timely. Um, in, in these times, um, with COVID, although some people will say we are, let's say, leaving the COVID era behind us, what we've seen is a number of things. First of all, um, is companies thinking about redesigning their supply chain, right? Um, um, and when companies rethink their supply chain, there's also an inherent structural element that is related to that. Uh, secondly, what you also see is, uh, let's say, the COVID crisis uh, opened up opportunities, but also opened up the need for companies to rethink about their core activities. That's a trend that has been um, started uh, quite some time ago, but with has been fueled by by COVID. Uh, so starting to th starting to think or continuing to think about your core activities. Uh, means that the activity level around corporate carve-outs and disposition of non-core activities is also something that we've seen an increased amount of activity of uh, in the past one, one or two years. Uh, so that also means uh, that you need to rethink your group structure uh, if you uh, carve out uh, part of your business. Um, and, and sometimes it also means uh, that you're gearing up for an acquisition in your core activity uh, segment, um, but that also has an implication on, um, on, on your structure. There's also an element, of course, on uh, what, what's happening in the world around us um, with, with BEPS uh, and the aftermath of BEPS, and so the increased focus on substance. I think that is something uh, that, that started off a, a number of years ago um, and where, and let's say, not only publicity-wise, but also the actions from uh, uh, from the BEPS action plan implemented, uh, for example, in uh, in the European Union with ATET one and ATET two, uh, we we see a lot of companies rethinking. Okay, uh, uh, the, the times where corporate structures do not need to fully align with business structures at uh, these times are basically. Uh, behind us. So we need to start thinking um, about, let's say, structures that are not yet at that stage to make them fit for purpose um, and to make them fully aligned with the business structure. So I think that's a couple of trends that have driven an increased attention and appetite for companies thinking about, uh, let's say, is my structure still fit for purpose? Really interesting, Arco. And I know that a number of folk are also focused on just legal entity footprint, just the sheer number of entities that they have and whether you know, that, that still serves them as well as it once did. What are you seeing, if anything, in that space? Yeah, I think it's a very good point, uh, Rodney. Uh, and, and that has to do with uh, also um, uh, making your corporate structure lean and mean. Mm. Um, so it's on one hand, I think, a byproduct of the thinking around, uh, let's say, carve out supply chain redesigns, et cetera, et cetera. But it's also about um, companies that have gone through a phase of, um, uh, let's say, whether it's carve out, whether it's M&A, so acquisitions, um, in order to basically get as much value, create as much value, uh, they um, yeah, of in, re in respect of or in relation to the carve out or MA activity, they are really taking a deep look at okay, uh, am I not throwing away uh, a lot of money because I have a structure with a lot of entities that do not always have a real proper function? They may have had a function in the past. Uh, they've some, some of them still make sense, some of them don't. So I need to fundamentally look at my structure and basically do a cleanup. So 
of what we refer to as legal entity reduction or corporate structure effectiveness. And that is something um, that, that is basically also driven by the desire and need to create value uh, as a company. And I guess, you know, that value point, Arco, is really interesting. So I guess as tax people, sometimes we focus on what's going into the tax expense line, but actually maintaining some of these structures as they're currently uh, set up must impose uh, a meaningful above the line administrative cost, both in terms of just dollars, but also of, of time. Exactly, exactly. F f fully agree with you. And uh, uh, let's say, as you may know, unwinding structures is sometimes uh, quite time consuming. Um, and that's why a lot of companies um, do not always put it on top of their priority list. But um, by looking at it systematically uh, and more comprehensively, we've seen that there's traction in the market of companies wanting to take that, let's say, deeper dive into their structure and, and basically see, okay, what do I need to do to make it fit for, uh, for purpose again? And just thinking about crystal ball gazing, okay, so I'll put you on the spot for your views. So this really accelerated in people's minds due to COVID. Um, and then it's continued to be a focus. What does my corporate structure look like? And you also mentioned we've got ongoing developments in the world of BEPS. If you had to crystal ball gaze forward, say, 18 months or so, um, are we through this trend of looking at corporate structure for fitness of purpose? Or is this going to be an ongoing um, focus or even an acceleration in people's minds as they look at what their business should look like? Yeah, so, so I, I, I definitely do not think we are at the, at the end of the wave. I think we are, let's say, just early in the wave or, or at best in the midst of the wave. Um, and the reason for that is, one, uh, um, the, the whole redesign of supply chains, that is something mm. uh, that is all, also just started. Uh, carve out uh, companies going to, back to their core activity. That's been something that's been going on for quite some time. But, but given uh, the whole competitive M&A landscape, we do expect to continue. Um, and something that may kick in as an additional uh, accelerator for uh, looking at corporate structure effectiveness is uh, restructuring. Uh, and what I mean with restructuring is uh, the, the wave that a lot of people predict in terms of companies needing to financially restructure. Mm. And now that governments uh, are starting to phase out uh, government support uh, because they think uh, we've seen the worst of COVID and the companies no longer need the full amount of support that they received over the past 18 months. Um, expectation is that that will trigger um, at least in certain sectors, um, a, a wave or mini wave of companies needing to financially restructure. Some of them will end and, and will turn into distressed M&A. So uh, we'll either become the target of a distressed M&A transaction or we'll need to dispose of, uh, of certain assets in order to uh, come through the, uh, the financial restructuring phase. But I think that will add another, uh, let's say, accelerator for companies looking at uh, corporate uh, structure effectiveness. So uh, uh, going back to your question, I think we've, we're just at the beginning or at best at the midst of the wave. And we will definitely see uh, a lot of interest over the next uh, couple of years. Well, very interesting, Arco. And, and great food for thought, particularly that point about potential upcoming financial restructurings in various industries as, as people need to refinance debt and as perhaps interest rates continue to change. So, Arco, just fascinating discussion. No wonder this is keeping you super busy. Topic, top of people's mind. Thank you for your time today.